So, let's think of a magazine. When you pick up a magazine, and of course you all pick up GQ, you of course turn to the first article, the very first article, the letter from the editor, and you just start reading. But then you think, wait, why does the table of contents not appear until page 100? 100? What's in that other 100 pages? Pictures, nothing but pictures, pictures, pictures. What's in the rest of this magazine? Pictures, 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 pictures. Why do some people start at the back of a magazine when they pick one up? Very weird, huh? How do we read? Let's think about this. So if we look at some journal articles, we can begin to get an idea of how we do read. A journal is not that much different from a magazine. So this is a journal article on robot ethics. And as we go through it, you can notice a few things. Just this first page had no figures. But as we keep going, we can see there are no figures. Sure, there are paragraphs and there are sections that help to break up the text. But the, uh, the journal as a whole, the article does not have any figures or tables. And so what we have are just huge blocks of text or pages. So what do we do with that? How do we, how do we read something like this? Well, it actually becomes kind of difficult. We don't want to read it. We don't want to just start in the middle and start reading large blocks of text. Now here's a different one, hub-based simulation and graphics. This one, the first page doesn't have any figures, but now on the second page, we begin to get some figures. So we have it on the second page, and then the third page again, we have another figure. This article goes through and has several different figures and tables. Sure, some pages don't have any, but then when it's necessary, they're there. Figures and tables actually help to break up large blocks of text and make it so that we want to read the article. Why do we read things like that? Why do we read 
do we prefer that? Because we want pictures. We want them. One professor told me in confidence, and of course I'm sharing it with the world, but he told me that even when he picks up a new journal in his field, a journal, he starts reading by just looking at the pictures. He ties to understand the entire article just by the pictures. And then, if he needs more information, he'll turn to the text. So let's get this right. We want pictures. And in general, we can communicate everything through pictures. So I think I've come up with something revolutionary. It's remarkable. I, I think it's going to make me millions. A picture is worth a thousand words. I know, right? That's good. Now, let's put this in rule terms. If an author can communicate something through a picture, through a figure, that's what we call it, figure, then he should. So if you can communicate figurally, then you should. We want pictures. That's what we read. That's what we go to first. First thing we look at. We do not start reading from the front of a magazine. We do not start reading all of the text. We look at the pictures first. So we've determined the importance of using insertions like tables and figures. Now let's look at actually inserting them, how they're used. So this is a journal article on nanotechnology and what this article is trying to do is it's trying to classify the different um, problems with nanotechnology. This is an article from 2007. So at the top of this page we have a table that gives their results of the impact analysis that they did um, on the different subclusters. Now what I want you to think about is this is this is typical that results are given in a table. Could this information be given any other way and still be as effective? Could it be written in text? Would it be effective? Could it be done as a chart? Would it be effective? What is the purpose of using a table? Now, what a table does is a table can point exactly the data. It tells you that at this point, the value is X. A chart, on the other hand, would usually give you approximate values. A chart helps you see trends. information as 
important that we know the exact numbers and not trends. And it's good for presenting things that are normally being taxed and doing it in a way that is easier to scan, easier for us to find the exact information we need. So now let's talk about the guidelines for names. There are quite a few of them, and these are conventions. Issues of nanotechnology in various fields participated in the workshop. Table 1. That's what we're supposed to look at, Table 1. What do we find there? Well, we have those experts, the institutions they're from, and what their various fields are, their expertise. This one does it in parentheses after the sentence that introduces it. That's the convention that this journal follows, or just a this writer wants to do it. It's perfectly acceptable. It's good. It could also say Table 1 lists the experts where they're from and their areas of expertise. But notice that it still has an explanation in the text. It introduces the table in the text and it explains it in the text. We do not want to just throw a table out there and say Table 1 gives our data. There's always a textual explanation because a reader will not see what we want them to see. We can't assume that. 